everyone, happy new year. Um, hi, my name's Brie and this is a video for the YouTube channel The Green Eyed Girl Reads. Um, today I thought I would talk about my 2014 reading resolutions <laughs> and I'm hoping I've made a list of things that is relatively achievable in 2014 so that at the end of the year I'm all happy and bouncy in my review video and not all sad. Um, I thought I would start though with just discussing the last book that I finished in 2013 which was The Book Thief by Marcus Cizak. Um, so I've actually had this on my shelf for several years, I think since about 2008 and you know it was always one of those things that I'd get around to reading and I noticed, uh, I think it's a little book owl, speaking over and over and over and over about how many times, how much she liked this book and I knew that the movie was coming out in 2014, I think, in Australia, because I don't think it's already come out. Uh, so I thought now might be the time to get it off the shelf and finish it off. And I really, really, really quite liked it. It was a really good book to end the year on. Um, so if you don't know what it's about, so I'll stop again. Um, the book Thief is set in World War Two in Germany, and the follows the main character named Liesel, who is the book thief of the title. Uh, it actually has, it actually is narrated by Death, which I think is one of the really strong aspects of this book because it it's set in a small town in Germany, but in Death being able to intersperse, it not only gives you a biggest perspective of what's happening in World, World War II and what events they're wrapped up in, it also gives you the ultimately positive ending or feeling of it, well that's what I came away with, um, of hope in humanity. Um, yeah, I haven't actually read anything based in World War II for a while and I was a little bit sad at the end because it's really quite a sad book, but I really think it's a worth a read if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, so the strongest aspect of the book is probably the characterisation. I went away really, really de like involved and interested in all the different characters and the different storylines that interweaved and um, it gives you kind of an idea of the history that we're talking about. Like a lot of the adults there had, the women had lived through World War One, and then a lot of the men had fought in World War One, and there was mothers whose children had been lost in World War One, and then mothers whose children were lost in World War Two, and then there's sort of the relatively historyless, naive, sort of naive character of Liesel who then as it develops, it's, she has a history that brings her to where she is and then she has a future that um, she's able to go on and live. Uh, yeah, so I really enjoyed that book. Uh, I'm currently reading, it's without its dust jacket, but I'll hold it up anyway, J.K. Rowling's A Casual Vacancy. Um, I'm quite enjoying it so far. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Midsummer Murders in a complimentary manner, and also quite strongly um, of Peyton's Place, which was written by, I think it's Grace Natalius, in the, I want to say 1950s. I think from what I remember, I saw a documentary about it, which is the reason I uh, initially picked it up, and it was about sort of similar setting to this casual vacancy where you have a whole heap of characters in a small town and how their lives interspersed and all the different things that happen. And, uh, Peyton's Place wasn't afraid of um, kind of looking at people's dirty laundry, I suppose, and I think for a time it was at least, if not banned, then severely kind of discounted by uh, both literary and moral kind of people who were trying to control the morality of uh, America at the time. Um, but yeah, I, so, um, yeah. I kind of get the same kind of feeling about Casual Vacancy except for the fact that it's set in Britain you get the, the interspersing of a lot of different characters and I'm quite interested to see where all the threads go and how they join up together in the end. I have to say though, a lot of people on booktube seem to really really like hardcovers. Do you not have to catch public transport? This makes my backpack so heavy and I don't want to have, because I split my time between um, a rural house and a country and a city house so kind of want to keep what I'm reading with me in different times and I do have an e-reader which I got for pretty much those purposes but when I end up with a big book like this it's just so heavy but I'm going to persist and keep reading and then I'm going to pass it on to the next person who wants to read it. Um, so with The Book Thief I think that 
makes a total of 46 books and novellas that I read in 2013, which is four books short of... 46. Four books short of the 50 book uh, goal that I had, um, which I had made in the last couple of years. Um, but I was still quite happy with that because I did have quite a few reading slumps where I started, like I think, I kind of had a look at the books on the shelves that didn't lay them and moved around. There was at least 12 books that I picked up and read the first couple of chapters of but just not managed to really stick to. Uh, um, yep, yeah, so, sorry, I have notes because I get confused. And that will also mean that my, a lot of my video is me looking down. So, this leads me to my 2014 book resolutions. The first thing is the bookshelf behind me is consisted entirely, uh, entirely except for these two books up here, uh, which is Gail Carragher's two books of Finishing School, which I've already read but I would like to reread. All of these are my physical to be read pile. Some of them I have owned for a very long time and they have yet to be read. Uh, for 2014, I would really, really, really like to make a big dint in them and either complete them all, well, okay. I'm aiming for 50 books, so I think there's already more than 50 on there, and I know that there's still a fair few of unread things on my e-reader, which I really want to start right now, so I can imagine a fair bit of e-reading is going to get done as well. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a pretty big dint in this, and I would like to not add to too much of that. However, a bit later in the video, you are going to see that this is not actually possible, um, because I have already bought books in January, or maybe next video, given that I'm almost at 7 minutes have I been charging about for seven minutes? Anyway, um, so I would like to read five of my to be read books off the shelves and either keep them because they are amazing or rehome them with people because I don't think I'm going to reread them um, before I buy a new book in 2014. Uh, and I'm not very good with I could sit down and make an actual scheme if I'm going to read this one next and I know that that's not going to work so that's why I've just got the big bookshelf and I can come when I'm ready for a new book and just flip through until I find something that I'm interested in trying um, and there's quite a range of genres so hopefully that will help um, this here is My Lord of the Rings which I would really 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 like to finish because I got through the first it's a six book edition rather than the like the larger three books got through the first book and a half quite easily and I don't know what happened last year I just put it down and I think I left it in one house and I was at the other house and yeah just never go back to it so that is on my list of things that I would really like to do in 2014 um, so in helping with this to be read challenge uh, I'm still aiming to read 50 books in 2014 but I've also put it as a page goal of um, my first goal anyway is to read 12,500 pages of completed, so complete short stories, novellas or books. Um, and that was calculated on 50 books at 250 pages each, which is really, really generous because I looked at some of my small, like thinner paperbacks and they all came up at about 350, but I thought I would give myself a goal that I am likely to meet. And that's to help with the fact that a lot of these books are I think some of the reason they don't get read is because they're longer or they're a bit more difficult to tackle because they're classics and things like that so I thought if I had a secondary type of goal rather than just the number of books read I might tackle some of the things that are a bit more difficult um, my other reading resolution for 2014 oh I also have a Patrick White book that is, was on my 2013 list to read which I would really like to get to at someone on my e-readers um, I think it's the Tweeborn Affair. I'll see how I go. He's also a classic. Uh, I'd like to make a video a month. Uh, I think that's a very modest and hopefully achievable aim for this channel. Um, at the moment I'm struggling to get videos that I like easily because I rewatch them and I get all self-conscious or <laughs> I made one on New Year's Day and I had the dog in with me because he couldn't go outside because he had stitches and he knocked over the video camera four times in the space of about three minutes and then it was all just on for young and old really so I might have him in to say hi another time but not when he can knock over the camera uh, so 
with the videos, I am also hoping to get better at writing reviews, is my other reading resolution. Uh, I'm going to start with the video ones because I feel like talking, like it's a conversation, talking to people, I can often come up with quite a few ideas of like why I like a book. And then I'm hoping to write companion reviews either on Goodreads or on my new blog under this name, which I will put a link to and doesn't have any posts down there. Um, yeah. So that's my book reading resolutions for 2014. I have a few other personal ones which I might cover later on because I noticed that Read Susie Read put a few up and makes you a bit more accountable if you put them up there. Uh, yeah, so what is everybody else's 2014 reading resolutions? I've seen a few of the booktubers have already put videos up. I haven't actually yet seen one that's just said, I go by the seat of my pants. So I'm hoping that someone will put up a video like that because I personally cannot do that, I need a vague plan, or at least I think I'll do this, even if what I end up doing has absolutely nothing to do with that. But, yeah. And this video has already gone on for way longer. So, I shall bring you my book haul for January that was never meant to exist a bit later on. Okay, bye!